dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making itong bigyan din ng kalaghan ng pulisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakahalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag pulisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! In need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. SERPI is here for you. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policymakers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SIRP, just visit the PIDS website and click the SIRP widget under the Databases tab or type SIRP-P.PIDS.gov.PA. SIRP has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, working papers, policy notes, audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2022, SERPI has more than 60 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes. Labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. On the enhanced website of SERPI, you can filter your research by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. All at the same time! SERPI has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit SERPI now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. 
This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Service through policy research. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies, o PIDS, na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan din ng kalagahan ng polisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! I need of references for your research? Do you want a digital library that you can access for free anytime and anywhere? You don't have to look far. Serpy is here for you. Serpy is an online database of socioeconomic materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Government agencies, research and academic institutions, and international organizations based in the Philippines. It is the country's first online repository of socioeconomic information. Created for policy makers and development practitioners, researchers, educators, and students. To access SERP, just visit the PIDS website and click the SERP widget under the databases tab or type serp pidsgovpa SERP has a wide variety of materials such as journal articles, books, research papers, policy notes audiovisual materials, and more. As of 2022, SERPI has more than 60 partner institutions contributing knowledge resources to the database. SERPI provides a comprehensive coverage of references encompassing 22 research themes. Labor and education, gender and development, poverty, technology and innovation, trade and industry, and many more. On the enhanced website of SERPI, you can filter your research by keyword or author, publication type, research theme, or year published. All at the same time! SERPI has more than 7,000 publications and audiovisual materials that you can access and download for free. What are you waiting for? Visit SERPI now! Socioeconomic Research Portal for the Philippines Innovating Knowledge Exchange and Policy Research So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, The 
ITS Corner Seminars And the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, BIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Service Through Policy Research. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series, where we feature our policy studies and the insights of government policymakers and program implementers, industry experts and practitioners, scholars, and civil society actors. With this webinar series, which we started in 2020, PIDS hopes to provide an accessible venue for evidence-based discussion of current and emerging development issues. I'm Sheila Siar, your moderator. Food security is a serious concern in the Philippines, a problem compounded by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, rising food and input prices, more intense and frequent natural hazards, and climate change. This afternoon, we'll take a closer look at the state of food security in the country and what we can do to comprehensively and systematically address our worsening food crisis, which is driving more Filipinos into poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. How can the Philippine government and other stakeholders steer the country toward attaining food and nutrition security? That is the question that we will answer in today's webinar. To start our conversation and give us more information about today's topic, may I call on our president, Dr. Aniceto Arbeta Jr. Sir? Uh, thank you, Sheila. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the following. Uh, from the government, we have the uh, Department of Agriculture under Secretary Rodolfo Vicera, House of Representatives, Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department, Socioeconomic uh, Research Bureau, Executive Director Manuel, Manuel Aquino, Aquino, National Economic and Development Authority Regional Director Agustin Mendoza, Philippine Rice Research Institute Executive Director John De Leon. From the academe, we have University of Visayas Executive Research Director Victorina Sousa, Siliman University Director Novi Maestro Campo, uh, Batangas State University Assistant Director Cristia uh, Lee Reyes, 
University of Batangas Assistant Director Jerome Asega. From the private sector, we have CL Foundation Incorporated Executive Director Ramon Emanuel Dereje. From CSO, NGO, INGO, we have uh, Nutrition Foundation uh, of, of the Philippines Executive Director Maria Lourdes Vega. Uh, Masaganang Sakahan Incorporated Director Daniel Agustin. We greet our friends from the media and we let me also greet our colleagues and uh, guests from the government, academia, civil society, media, and private sector, and those watching to the PIDS and SERPI Facebook pages. Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar on assessing the state of food security in the Philippines. This topic is an urgent and pressing concern because of food security, because food security affects all us, all of us. Uh, the Philippines placed 64th out of 113 countries in the Economist 2021 Global Food Security Index. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, the country's performance in achieving sustainable development goals, uh, SDG 2, zero hunger uh, regress in 2020, uh, especially the food and uh, security is one out, is that one out of five of the 35, tar 32 targets uh, have fallen back. Uh, based on the Philippine SDG 2020 pace of progress report. While the government, civil society, and other sectors have made significant gains in combating malnutrition, existing socioeconomic inequalities, and natural human-made disasters, including climate change, exacerbate food insecurity. Alarmingly, our food producers, particularly the farmers and fisher folks, have consistently ranked uh, as the poorest basic sectors in 2015 and 2018 based on PSA data. With the Philippines ranking first among all countries in natural hazards and exposure risks according to the Informed Risk Index 2022, we can expect more super typhoons, earthquakes, flooding, uh, volcanic eruptions to destroy crops, livelihood, uh, property, and infrastructure necessary for economic activities. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed vulnerabilities, exposed the vulnerabilities of our healthcare system and the national food chain. The pandemic restricted the movement of people and goods, limited access to resources and aid, and resulted in a widespread unemployment that together made the price of food and basic goods even more unaffordable for many poor Filipinos. Moreover, conflicts such as the russia ukraine war also adversely affect the ability of people and countries to produce and procure food. This conflict also adds to the growing list of factors contributing to the global food crisis. Food security needs uh, uh, to be ensured and, and from, the, from the household to the national level. Today's presentation help us look at the short-term and long-term strategies to make this happen. The study is food security accessible, affordable, and stable. The State of Food Security in the Philippines, authored by PIDS Supervising Research Specialist Ivory Galang, looks at the historical development of the food security discourse and how it is measured at the international and national levels. It also analyzes related policies and programs, the historical gains and challenges we need to address to realize food security in the country. We will also hear uh, from representatives of government agencies that are actively working toward food security, Department of Agriculture Policy Research Service Senior Staff Ayan Jumari uh, Panaga uh, will discuss how the Department's food security framework addresses the challenges and brings us closer to the food security. Uh, fellow discussant Aileen Ruth Abelia, officer in charge of the National Nutrition Council uh, Nutrition Surveillance Division, and how pa Paulo Labrador, uh, the science uh, research specialist of the Department of Science and Technology Food and Nutrition Research Institute will also offer the response and insights. We are grateful to have you at this webinar. To our attendees, please stay until the end of the webinar. I encourage you to participate in the open forum actively. Thank you, and I'll now give back the floor to the moderator, Sheila. Thank you very much, Dr. Urbeta. So before I introduce our speaker, allow me to remind you of our guidelines to join the discussion. So you may post your questions and comments using the Q&A button. And please indicate your name and organization if you want to be identified when I read the questions. So um, you may use Tagalog if you are more comfortable expressing yourself in Tagalog. That is fine with us. Or Taglish, that's okay too. 
To all presenters and discussants, you may respond by typing your answers, which will be visible to all attendees. Alternatively, you can choose to answer the questions live during the open forum. And for our live stream viewers on Facebook, we highly encourage you to participate as well. Please use the comment section on Facebook for your questions. We will accommodate as many questions as possible that are relevant to the discussion during the open forum. Now that we have set the house rules, let us begin our conversation by listening to the presentation, which is mentioned by Dr. Obeta, is based on a PIDS paper titled, Is Food Supply Accessible, Affordable, and Stable? The State of Food Security in the Philippines, authored by Ivory Mika Galang, a supervising research specialist at PIDS. Ms. Galang has been involved in economic modeling research projects and evaluations of agriculture-related government programs. Her other research interests include child labor and rural development. She finished her master's degree in public policy at the University of Tokyo in Japan, and she has a bachelor's degree in development studies from UP in Manila. From uh, 2017 to 2019, she was also a part-time instructor at UP in Manila, where she taught introductory statistics and economics subjects. Ivory is delivering her presentation in Tagalog and English so that more people can understand it. Ivory, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Ma'am Fila. Please allow me to share my screen. Here. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So again, good afternoon, everyone. So, bago tayo magsimula, uh, meron akong munting activity para sa ating lahat. So, siguro familiar na kayo dito sa interactive platform na menti.com. So, please go to menti.com. Pwede nyong iscan itong QR code or pwede nyong itype itong code na 4497201. 4497201. Para sa ating mga audience sa Facebook, you may join um, by just typing your answers sa comment section at sa Zoom audience naman natin, pwede sa chat box na lang po kayo sumagot. So, tingnan natin, ano ba yung question natin sa Mentimeter? So, simple lang yung tanong natin, ano ang iyong pananghalian kanina? So, kahit hindi nyo na po banggitin yung brand or restaurant, basta ano yung pagkain? So, just continue typing in your questions and then later titingnan natin kung ano yung magiging sagot. So, yung topic natin for uh, this afternoon ay seguridad sa pagkain or food security. So, meron po tayong nilabas sa discussion paper uh, entitled, uh, Is Food Supply Accessible, Affordable, and Stable? The State of Food Security in the Philippines. So, pwede po ninyong i-download ito sa PIDS website. Hanapin nyo lang po yung pangalan po at itong DP2022-2021. So, ang i-discuss kasi natin ngayon ay ano nga ba ang food security? Bakit bahalaga tong pag-usapan? Ano ba yung lagay sa kasulukuyan? Ano yung mga hakbang na ginagawa ng ating gobyerno at yung mga mungkahi para mas mapaiting pa natin yung pag-achieve ng food security? So, unang tanong, kailan ba natin masasabi talaga na tayo ay may seguridad sa pagkain or may food security tayo. Kapag ba mayroong pagkain, basta may available na pagkain, ano yung tinutukoy natin saan? Sa mga taniman? Sa mga pamilihan? Sa ating bang mga ref? Or sa ating mga hapagkainan? Um, tuwing kailan may available na pagkain? Araw-araw ba? Every meal? Agahan, tanghalian, hapunan? O yung iba tuwing um, every other day yung kanilang uh, pagkain. Para kanino ba ang food security? Para lang ba ito sa mga mayayaman? At ano, ano bang klase yung pagkain yung ating tinutukoy pag food security? Paano kung araw-araw akong kumakain, pero hamburger lang yung kinakain ko araw-araw? Naatin ko pa rin ba ang food security? So ilan to sa mga tanong na um, titingnan natin, paano ba talaga natin define yung food security? 
So, balikan natin yung ating Mentimeter. Base sa word cloud, nakikita nyo ba yung word cloud ngayon? Visible ba siya? Ayan, ang pinakamalaki ay yung rice, kanin. Malaki din ang chicken, fried chicken. Um, ano pa ba yung, yung mga medyo maliliit ay yung mga fruits and vegetables, ano? Or specific na kasi yung mga pagkain, kaya yung iba maliliit na. So, pinakamalaki is rice. At makikita natin mamaya na um, talagang um, yun ang pangunahing kinakain natin. Tingnan naman natin sa Facebook, Teya. Ano yung mga naging sagot ng ating mga audience? Okay, so wala masyadong nag-comment. Baka nahiya sila kasi hindi nga naman anonymous <laughs> sa ating Facebook. How about sa Zoom? May mga sumagot ba? Pansip. Okay, may mga nagpansit kanina. Pwede rin kayong sumagot ng wala. <laughs> Kung hindi kayo kumain, katulad ko. <laughs> Sige. So, balikan natin yung ating presentation. So, yung food security, hindi lang kasi siya yung basta merong available na pagkain. Ayon sa World Food Summit, may apat na dimensions yung food security. Availability. Pangalawa yung accessibility, pangatlo utilization, pangapat yung stability. So, sige, meron nga tayo available na pagkain, um, may mga gulay at mga um, pagkain sa, um, halimbawa, sa mga taniman, sa mga farms natin. Um, ang tanong, ang next na tanong ay, available ba ito sa ating mga pamilihan? Um, abot kaya ba ang presyo ng mga pagkain? So kahit na mayroong pagkain na prinoduce yung ating mga farmers, kung hindi naman ito abot kaya sa ating mga consumers, hindi rin natin na-achieve ang food security. Next dimension ay yung utilization o tinitingnan naman natin yung kalidad ng pagkain. Ito ba ay masustansya at um, safe ba ito kainin, yung food safety na tinitingnan natin. At ang pang-apat na dimension ay yung stability. Meron bang mga pagkakataon na wala tayong um, supply ng pagkain? Ano-ano yung mga factors na nakaka-apekto sa stability ng supply ng pagkain? Ito yung mga i-discuss natin sa hapon na ito. Bakit nga ba mahalaga na pag-usapan natin to? Unang-una, dahil nakakabit ang food security sa pag-achieve natin ng nutrition security o yung pangkabuan na um, nutrition o yung pagiging healthy ng ating pangangatawan. Hindi lang yung ating physical na pangangatawan, ganun din yung ating isipan. So kapag di ba gutom tayo, aminin natin, pag gutom tayo, hindi tayo na nakakapag-isip ng diretsyo. Nahihirapan tayo. Yung iba, sumusungit, uh, mainit ang ulo kapag gutom. So ganun din si ba sa mga bata sa eskwelahan, kapag sila ay gutom, nahihirapan din sila na i-absorb yung mga lessons nila sa, sa eskwelahan. So napakahalaga ng food security. At kapag nga meron kang um, problema sa pag-access ng nutritious na pagkain, nagre-resulta ito sa tinatawag nating malnutrition. So pwedeng kulang ka sa timbang o baari namang susobra kapag hindi tama ang iyong kinakain. So, ilan yung mga nakalista dito sa um, mga nagiging problema? Pwedeng may underweight ka, kulang sa timbang, um, bansot yung ating mga bata. Ibig sabihin, yung height nila ay uh, mas mababa para sa kanilang edad. Ganon din naman yung pagiging payat, masyadong payat or wasted. Ganon din, uh, malnutrition din pag sumobra ka naman sa timbang or pagiging overweight. So, ano bang implication? Mag-focus tayo sa stunting o yung pagiging banso tano. Hindi lang kasi ito basta na, basta maliit lang siya. Hindi kasi siya natutulog sa hapon. ba diba? Yun yung mga sinasabi natin sa mga bata. Pero, yung pagiging banso, meron siyang short term effect sa mga bata. Ano yung short term? So, binanggit nga natin kanina na nahihirapan sila sa eskwelahan, na apektuhan yung kanilang cognitive development, at ganun din yung pagiging um, malakas ng kanilang katawan. So, nagiging mahina sila, mas prone sila sa mga karamdaman at sakit. So, i-expect natin, pagtanda nila, 
magmamanifest, mag-worsen pa yung nagkakaroon ng long-term effect dun sa ating mga kabataan na uh, stunted. No? So, pagtanda nila, um, merong economic repercussion no? kapag um, bababa yung IQ nila, hindi sila ganun katala sa pag-iisip, nagiging sakitin sila. So, mas maliit yung kanilang um, chance na kumita ng maayos uh, pag sila ay parte na ng ating labor force. So, merong um, um, epekto sa current generation, pati sa future generation din. So, ano nga ba yung lagay ng food security sa kasalukuyan? At gagamitin pa rin natin bilang guide yung apat na dimensions. At kung tayo ay mag-zoom in at zoom out dito sa mga dimensions, may mga nakakabit pa na other factors. Katulad na dito sa availability, ano, andyan yung production, importation, at mga stocks ng pagkain. Sa accessibility, nahahati pa yan sa dalawa. Mayroong physical accessibility at may economic accessibility. Kapag physical accessibility, ito, yung um, nakatuon sa mga infrastructure, tulad ng transportation, logistics, storage, at sa economic ac uh, accessibility naman, tinatawag din natin itong affordability. Ang tinitingnan naman natin ay yung presyo ng mga pagkain at yung kakayahan ng mga tao na bilhin yung pagkain base sa kanilang um, pang-araw-araw na sahod. At sa utilization, binanggit natin kanina, tinitingnan natin ano ba yung kinukonsumo talaga na pagkain, uh, safe ba yan, ano yung kalidad, nutritious ba ang mga pagkain. At sa stability, iba't ibang factors yung nakaka-apekto dyan. Andyan yung mga natural and man-made disasters, may mga war and conflict, even climate change nakaka-apekto rin yan. So unahin natin sa availability. Ang isa sa mga parang indicators no, na tinitingnan natin is itong self-sufficiency ratio o yung kakayahan ng bansa na mag-produce ng sarili nitong pagkain. Sa mga gulay, uh, in general, yung fruits and vegetables natin, um, we source it dito sa local, kaya ng ating domestic production. Um, sa rice naman, uh, nasa 90, around 90%, yung SSR or self-sufficiency ratio natin, dati nasa mas mataas na um, um, number ito. Pero throughout the years, uh, lumiliit na. Ganon din sa core, nasa 95%. Sa pork and chicken, um, nasa 98% to around 90s. Pero in the recent decade, bumaba na siya. Around 90% na lang yung um, nasasagot ng domestic production. Itong sa galunggong, sinong may favorite sa GG? So, sa galunggong, um, nasa uh, 99 to 100% dati na pro-produce natin yung mga galunggong galing sa sarili nating um, um, mga katubigan. Pero uh, last two years, medyo erratic yung um, self-sufficiency natin. Biglang lumalaki yung importation natin. Ganon din sa tuna, in the recent decade, nasa 80% na lang yung um, na kukuha natin mula sa domestic production. Ngayon, dumako naman tayo sa next dimension, yung accessibility. So, ano-ano nga ba yung um, binibili ng ating um, mga kababayan? So, ayon sa uh, study um, ni Embuya et al. No 2021, ginamit nila yung 2015 na uh, datos ng PSA. At ang nakita nila, ang cost o yung halaga ng recommended diet ay nasa 68.2 pesos per adult um, per day. At ang kanilang nakita na um, shares, dapat ang in-spend natin ay around 15% para sa meat, fit, fish, and nuts. Uh, pumapangalawa lang dapat yung starchy staple. Anito yung rice no, sa 11.4%. Pero ano talaga yung nangyayari? So hindi tayo nagsispend ng 68.2%. Nasa 47.5 um, pesos lang yung na-spend. At ang pinakamalaking share ay ito. Yung color blue, yung starchy staple. Um, pumapangalawa lang yung um, meat, fish, and nuts. So kanina, di ba, dun sa ating uh, mentimeter, uh, napakalaki talaga nung sa rice. So starchy staple, yun yung ating staple food. Napatunayan natin siya ngayong hapon. So, tingnan naman natin, 
um, yung mga mahihirap, yung for, purest 40%, ikukumpara natin sa richest 40%. Ang mga, uh, uh, yung purest 40%, in terms of um, consumption ng meat and pulses, nasa around 50% uh, percent lang yung kaya nilang ikonsumo. Um, yung richest 40%, mas mababa din sa recommended yung kaya nila ikonsumo pero maliit lang yung gap very striking yung dito sa ano uh, poorest 40% so saan tayo um bumabawi di ba less than the recommended para sa meat vegetables milk and um milk products ganun din sa eggs dito tayo bumabawi sa starchy state well kita nyo naman 59% more than the recommended. So, doon naman tayo bumabawi sa starchy. Bakit ba um, nandun tayo sa starchy? Bakit hindi tayo gaano doon sa meat, vegetables, etc.? So, isa sa nakaka-apekto kasi um, sa presyo, pagiging abot kaya ng mga bilihin, ay yung lagay ng ating infrastructure. So, pwede kasing totally wala na infra yung infrastructure na kailangan natin. Or pwede hindi maganda yung lagay or yung condition ng mga um, infrastructure. So, ano ba yung um, ranking ng Pilipinas? So, nakikita natin dito sa screen natin na mababa yung ranking ng Philippines against its neighbors no sa ASEAN. So, laging behind tayo. Um, in terms of logistics, shipping. At bakit ba kasi kailangan natin ng maayos na infrastructure? So, halimbawa sa fruits and vegetables, um, very um, sensitive sa temperature and proper handling itong mga fruits and vegetables dahil nga yung iba dyan ay perishable, pati na rin yung sa isda. No? Uh, kaya dapat maayos yung infrastructure na... Um, na daan, yung mga lubak, um, meron na rin talaga yung implication dun sa um, food wastage. Ano. So, instead of yung buong malaking basket ay madadala mo sa pamilihan na as is 100%, mabibili sa magandang kalidad ng ating mga mamimili. Kapag pangit yung daan, pag hindi maganda yung storage uh, facilities, Liliit lang yung pwedeng uh, maibenta sa mga pamilya ano, na nasa magandang kalidad. Kaya ang tendency ay tataas yung presyo. Ngayon dumako naman tayo sa next dimension, yung utilization. Uh, meron naman tayong nakita sa trend na uh, bumaba um, for a time, 2007 hanggang 2016, yung hunger incidence base sa datos ng PSA. Napababa natin siya. At ganun din, napataas naman yung number ng mga households, yung mga kabahayan na food secure, napataas naman natin siya. At dahil dyan, meron din tayong gains sa um, malnutrition kahit pa paano napababa natin yung stunting, wasting. Um, ngunit, kung ikukumpara natin itong performance natin na ito against our um, neighbor, limbawa yung Vietnam, makikita natin na mabagal yung ating pagpapababa sa stunting prevalence. So, ito yung study ni Dr. Ulep ng PIDS. No? Uh, nasa 0 to 1% lang yung rate uh, annually ng pagbaba ng stunting natin, pero yung Vietnam nasa 5 to 6%. At nakikita rin natin na, oo, oh, hindi nga na nga tayo masyadong nagugutom. Pero pag tinignan naman natin yung kalidad ng pagkain na kinakain, um, meron pa rin tayong problema. No? Ay yung macro and, at micronutrient deficiency, um, mas lumalala siya. Sa next dimension, yung last dimension natin, yung stability. At nabanggit nga ni President Orbeta kanina, yung et, mga factors na to, no Andyan yung digmaan ng Russia-Ukraine na nakaka-apekto sa supply chain ng uh, iba't ibang mga pagkain at hindi lang yung mga pagkain pati yung mga inputs kaya talagang nag, may kumbaga may multiplier effect yung um, mga um, problema natin mas tumataas yung presyo 
at may problema din, syempre, sa mga peste at sakit sa mga taniman. O halimbawa, sa case naman ng swine, yung Asian swine, fever, um, etc. Ganyan, uh, may problema din tayo pa rin sa COVID, yung ating pandemya. At uh, ito nga yung napakalalang problema din sa climate change na syempre um, um, nakaka-apekto sa production uh, level yung kakayahan natin mag-produce ng ating pagkain. Kaya patuloy na nakaka-apekto yan sa ating um, mataas na presyo ng pagkain. Malamang ang ating mga nanay, ang ating mga estudyante, lahat kayo dyan na nakikinig, nararamdaman nyo yung epekto ng uh, mataas na presyo ng pagkain. At kanya-kanya tayo na paghigpit ng sinturo na ginagawa. So tingnan natin, ano ba talaga yung um, um, performance ng Philippines against our neighbors? O doon nakita na nga natin na laging behind tayo. No? Pero in fairness naman, throughout the years, Makikita natin dito sa Global Food Security Index na scores, papataas naman ang scores ng Philippines. So, tinitingnan kasi ng The Economist yung iba't ibang factors na nakaka-apekto nga sa global um, food security ng bawat bansa. Uh, so, halos pataas naman yung trend. Ibig sabihin, improving yung scores ng mga bansa. Um, pero, titingnan natin yung uh, pace, gano'ng kabilis or gano'ng kabagal yung pagtaas ng scores natin. So halimbawa dito, ito yung color green yung Indonesia. Dati nasa mas mababa yung score nila, no? pero na-overtake na nila tayo, mas mataas na yung score nila. At ito yung latest ranking 2021 versus 2022. Gumanda yung ranking ng Indonesia, ganun din sa Vietnam. Pero yung Philippines, unfortunately, bumaba yung ating ranking sa latest na ranking na nilabas ng The Economist. Ngayon naman, tingnan natin ano ba yung pre-pandemic na conditions at yung nagkaroon na nga tayo ng pandemic. Um, pre-pandemic, um, apat sa sampung kabahayan yun na nakakaranas ng moderate or severe food insecurity. Ibig sabihin nito talagang hindi consistent yung access nila sa pagkain. May mga pagkakataon na natutulog sila sa gabi na hindi na sila kumakain. Pagkagising nila sa umaga, hindi na rin sila kumakain. So, ito yung um, isa talaga sa mga kailangan natin na um, tutukan para mapaliit natin yung number ng mga households na nakakaranas ng moderate or severe food insecurity. Nakita natin ng pandemya lumala na sa anin sa sampung mga kabahayan ang nahirapan talaga na mag-access ng pagkain. At um, na-reflect din yung mga problema natin ito no sa SDG2, yung performance natin sa pagkamit ng uh, Sustainable Development Goal number 2. Um, on track tayo para lang dito sa obesity. Pero sa other um, malnutrition ay uh, marami pa rin talagang kailangang um, gawin. So ano ba yung mga ginawa? Ano ba yung mga hakbang ng ating gobyerno para ma marating natin yung estado ng food security? Siyempre yung DA, um, ito, sila yung involved. Siyempre ang focus nila ay mapataas yung um, production level ng ating bansa at kaya marami silang programa para sa ating mga magsasaka. Meron ding um, Senate bill na pinasa um, si um, Senator Ontiveros last year, yung Zero Hunger Bill. Unfortunately, hindi siya um, nakapasa. Um, naglalayon sana to na magkaroon ng Commission on the Right to Adequate Food at magbalangkas ng National Food Policy. At nung kasagsaga ng um, pandemya, nagkaroon ng IATF on Zero Hunger. Um, very ano sila popular um, last year. No? Uh, meron silang multisectoral initiative, yung Pilipinas kontra buto. Uh, multisectoral, ibig sabihin na yung gobyerno at yung private sector and civil society. Unfortunately, hindi na rin siya natuloy. Ito naman, naka, uh, saad naman dito sa screen natin, yung iba't ibang programa na nakalagay sa PIPAN o yung Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition. So, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na um, nutrition-sensitive programs at nutrition-specific programs. So, yung mga nutrition-specific programs tulad nitong um, 
overweight obesity management, micronutrient supplementation. Ito yung mga um, direktang nakaka-apekto, nakakapagpataas ng nutritional outcomes. Um, samantalang itong other programs na nakalagay dito, tulad ng gulayan sa paaralan, FMR, siskwento caravans, ito naman yung mga examples ng nutrition sensitive programs. So, hindi direct yung kanilang um, impact sa nut- uh, nutritional outcomes, pero nakakatulong din sila. At mapapansin natin dito na involved, hindi lamang yung DA, kasi ba diba, yun yung iniisip natin, food security, trabaho lang yan ng DA. Pero mali po yung ganun kaisipan dahil lahat ng um, um, maraming uh, government agencies yung kailangan magtulong-tulong. Andan yung DPWH para sa public works, yung mga LGUs, DTI, um, mahalaga din tong um, salin tubig. Yan. At yung DOH, DepEd, and other, um, andan din yung DAR. Um, iba't ibang mga ahensya ng gobyerno yung kailangan magtulong-tulong para talaga na ma-achieve natin yung food security. Ano ba yung mga mungkahi natin para sa hinaharap? So una dito, um, yung systems view na tinatawag natin. Ano ba tong systems view? Kasi yung food system, um, nakadikit siya sa iba pang mga system. Yung energy system, trade system health system, and other systems. So, dapat tinitingnan natin ang um, food, yung pag, um, pagkaroon ng pagkain, sapat na pagkain, bilang nakadugtong nga siya sa iba't ibang mga systems. Hindi siya isolated. So, kapag gagawa tayo ng mga programa, ma- ma-anticipate natin na, ah, okay, connected pala siya doon. So, dapat meron tayong maayos na coordination doon sa uh, specific um agency na na involved sa system na yun. At kung meron pa kayong gustong malaman tungkol sa food systems, I recommend you to watch itong YouTube uh, video na ito. Uh, webinar din siya about um, food security. Next uh, recommendation natin ay sana yung nutrition, di ba yung tipan nga, Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition. Sana pag-isahin na yung food security and nutrition security kasi talagang hindi na sila mahihiwalay. Pagsamahin na natin sila at magkaroon tayo talaga ng um, um, ano ba yung vision? Ano ba yung mission? ba diba sa QMS meron tayong ganyan. Uh, ano ba yung gusto talaga natin ma-achieve, ma-achieve? By anong taon? Kailangan specific tayo. Kailan natin gusto ma-achieve yung food security? O, alimbawa, by 2040 ma-achieve natin food security and nutrition security. Then, we work backwards. Ano yung kailangan natin gawin bawat taon para ma-achieve natin yung goal natin? At bawat ahensya ng gobyerno, meron sila kanyang-kanyang action plans para nakikita kung ano yung kanilang mga role, ano yung kanilang specific programs bawat taon, and lahat yun working towards our um, goal, shared goal, yung nutrition and food security. Yung pangatlo natin na uh, mungkahi ay um, i-prioritize natin yung children and lactating pregnant women sa pinakamahihirap na lugar sa Pilipinas. Bakit may prioritization? So, alam naman natin na imposible ang maabot yung bu- lahat tayo sabay-sabay matulungan ng gobyerno. Hindi yun mangyayari. So, kailangan may prioritization. Unahin natin yung talagang mga nangangailangan na tulungan. Meron tayong um, window lang na tinitingnan, di ba, yung mga um, bata, edad lima pa baba. Merong crucial window na dapat matugunan yung kakulangan nila sa nutrition. Unahin natin sila. Dahil sinabi natin kanina, uh, may long-term uh, repercussion, irreversible effect sa ating mga kabataan. Kaya dapat sila yung ating unahin. At yung last na recommendation natin ay gamitin natin yung data, yung mga available na technology and innovation para magkaroon tayo ng maayos na database. Um, ayan. So, gayahin natin sana itong um, Global Information and Early Warning System ng FAO. Um, although meron na rin naman yung DA, ano, meron na din silang monitoring na ginagawa. Pero mas maganda kung talagang um, 
integrated na lahat. Hindi lamang yung mga datos ng DA. Um, dapat nakadikit na rin sa ating database yung mga impact indicators natin. Yan, limbawa, yung mga stunting prevalence, yung wasting prevalence, etc. So, nakahimay siya lahat ng indicators ilalagay po natin dun sa ating um, iniisip natin na um, database. At maglabas sana ng mga early warning, di ba? Alimbawa, ma madetect niya na merong kakulangan ng supply ng repolyo sa isang probinsya. So, ano yung magiging tugon ng gobyerno dapat doon? So, makikita natin na ah, may oversupply dito sa katabing probinsya. So, mas madali yung coordination ng mga LGUs na okay, pwede pong dito manggaling yung kulang na supply. So, yun yung isa sa mga um, tinitingnan natin na dapat meron tayong maayos na datos na um, although available, meron tayong mga PSA data. Pero um, yung mas granular na data, mas real-time, yun yung um, kailangan natin. Meron na rin kasing ginawa yung may, may project yung DA at um, FAO, yung Phil FSIS. Um, unfortunately, hindi na rin siya natuloy. So, ito sana, no, kung mas napaganda natin itong Phil FSIS, um, ito yung magandang um, gawin ng ating um, gobyerno. At yun lamang po, um, sana ang um, dalangin natin ay lahat ng sambahayan ay maging food secure sa hinaharap. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. And thank you very much, uh, Ivory, for the clear and comprehensive presentation. So, pinaliwanag sa atin ni Ivory, no, kung ano yung, kung ano talaga yung konsepto ng uh, food security. At iba-ibang dimensions nito at uh, yung current state of each dimension in the country. She also discussed uh, the current initiatives of these executive and legislative branches, as well as uh, initiatives of other sectors and what we can do further to address our food crisis. So uh, her recommendations, um, among others, emphasize using a systems approach in addressing uh, food insecurity and also capitalizing on uh, technology and innovation uh, for monitoring and evaluation. Okay, so ngayon naman, let's listen to what our esteemed panel of discussions um, has to say about uh, the findings and recommendations of the study. And we will also be asking them to share their insights on certain issues outlined by uh, Ivory. Um, when we talk about food security, uh, food availability, uh, supply rel reliability, and food accessibility are of paramount imp importance. Yung sabi nga ni Ivory kanina, yung pagkakaroon ng supply ng, ng pagkain at yung supply na maasan at abot kaya din, no? So, and, and this is where specific agencies of the government come in, particularly the Bangit Nanya Kanina, ang Department of Agriculture. And this afternoon, we have Mr. Ian Adjo Maripanaga, Development Management Officer at EA's Policy Research Service. Um, his functions cover the analysis, review, and formulation of policies relating to the agriculture and fishery sector. Mr. Panaga has a bachelor's degree in agricultural biotechnology from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and, and a master's degree in public administration from UP Diliman. Currently, he is a first-year student in the Juris Doctor program of the UP College of Law. So, um, Mr. Panaga, aside from giving your reactions to the issues and recommendations of the study, may we know the DA's plans to ensure food security in the country amid uh, the continuing threat of climate change, rising prices, and logistic, logistics issues. You, you now have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Sheila, for that kind introduction. And uh, thank you also to Ms. Micah. Ms. Maika for the very comprehensive presentation. So, um, uh, Ms. Maika has shared with us that uh, food security is not only the function of agriculture sector, but it's also important uh, to consider the nutritional aspects and health aspects of it. And also, uh, in these modern times, we have to really have to uh, think uh, using the food systems so we can ensure multi-stakeholder collaboration uh, 
towards achieving a single goal of the of food security. So we at DA uh, to achieve uh, food security, we have uh, four four pillars for the DA under the DA agenda. So this include uh, consolidation, modernization, industrialization, and professionalization. So let me just share with you a brief uh, key strategies under those four pillars. So under consolidation, uh, we have uh, Bayanihan agri, agri clusters, so uh, farm clustering and consolidation, which will be known as uh, Bayanihan agri clusters involves the integration of government interventions, such as provision of loans, uh, farm mechanization, free seeds and fertilizers, and market support to organize farm, farmer and fisher groups. So uh, this program also aims to empower stakeholders to reduce uh, production costs, gain more benefits from the agriculture value chain and uh, direct interventions to achieve economies of scale. So second strategy, uh, collective action, cooperatives development. So this involves uh, organize, organizing farmers and fishers into cooperatives and business entities to become viable blocks or units of production, enjoying um, higher efficiencies in op operations and improved profits. So third, uh, the province-led agriculture and fisheries extension systems, so uh, or PAFES, so this will be institutionalized to bring extension services to the grass grassroots level amid challenges of devolution. So this is very important. Uh, uh, provide provided that uh, we are undergoing uh, devolution uh, program under the Mandanas ruling. So fourth under the consolidation is the mobilization and empowerment of partners. So they will pursue a policy of active participation and partnership with the private sector in establishing more agribased industries in the countryside and developing markets for agriculture products. So in particular, DA will continuously court partnerships with local government units and individual provinces. So uh, fifth uh, is diversification. So this is important in achieving uh, levels of nutrition. So uh, farmers, particularly those involved in the production of rice, corn, and coconut, will be encouraged and supported to diversify, diversify into other commodities such as vegetables and other high value seasonal crops to boost their incomes and also to uh, provide nutritional foods to the consumers. So next is credit support. So the agricultural uh, credit policy framework will now focus on uh, promoting active participation of the banking sector and government financial institutions in the rural financial system. So the second pillar is modernization. So under this, uh, we have uh, technology and innovation, including digital agriculture. So uh, this is uh, this will address one of the recommendations provided by Ms. Maika. So digital technology and innovation, such as ICADIWA, and the use of data analytics will be leveraged, leveraged uh, throughout the food value chain and logistics, starting with the efficient distribution of inputs to farmers enrolled in the registry system for basic sectors in agriculture. So the automated system will improve farm productivity and cut waste by using analytics to facilitate data-driven farming practices for uh, small farmers. So next is the farm mechanization and infrastructure investments. Uh, so this is vital for the logistics aspects as uh, identified in the food systems framework. So vital rural infrastructures such as farm to market roads, irrigation systems, uh, post harvest facilities, storage, tolling, uh, processing and marketing facilities. So this is in partnership with the uh, private sectors and also the local government units uh, so private sector and LGUs will be engaged in the creation of food hubs and establishment of efficient transport and logistic systems. So next, uh, we also have uh, we will we also tackle um, issue on the climate change adaptation and mitigation measures. So they aggressively pursue institutionalize regional and provincial climate risk and vulnerability vulnerability assessment to inform. Uh, proactive measures during typhoon season and other natural disaster. 
So lastly, under food safety and regulations, so the DA will focus funding and activities in mitigating the effects of plant and animal diseases by improving uh, laboratory and research facilities, building up traceability systems, and unifying sanitary and phytosanitary control measures against plants and animal epidemics. So uh, this is related to the third dimension of food security discussed earlier, which is uh, more on uh, food utilization. So the third pillar is uh, industrialization. So DA will institutionalize um, agri-industrial business corridors. So DA will pursue the establishment of these facilities with uh, fishers management areas and trading posts to provide smallholder farmers and fisher folk access to resources, including uh, state-of-the-art production technology, hatcheries and nurseries, capital and value-adding facilities. Uh, so next is the global trade and export development and promotion. So uh, this is more on uh, strengthening our export crops. Um, so uh, lastly, under industrialization, uh, we have the post-harvest processing logistics and marketing support. So DA will harmonize local production schedules and supply chain activities in its supervision of the supply, importation, and price stability of key agricultural goods. So programs such as Kadiwa and Ikadiwa will level up through increased partnerships with the local government units and uh, intensified procurement and marketing of farmers' produce. So uh, DA directly procures from uh, farmers and fisher folks to sell to the uh, areas uh, wherein low prices of those commodities are needed. So an improved national agricultural logistics system will be developed to speed up and reduce transport and distribution costs from production to consumption areas, also including export destinations. So last pillar uh, is the professionalization. So under this, we have agricultural career system. So as higher education institutions and Agricultural state colleges and universities are challenged to produce the next generation of farmers and agripreneurs. DA will actively form partnerships and linkages for in internships and promote agriculture as a viable formative and professional track, specifically in rural areas. So second, uh, education and training, uh, specifically on agribusiness management. So education and trainings will be conducted with focus on helping farmers learn and improve their knowledge and skills in entrepreneurship and in farm business management. Next is the youth and women engagement. So information dissemination on long-term agricultural programs, practices, and learning platforms for target uh, engagement of youth and women. So this, this uh, is to ensure uh, sustainability of uh, the programs. So lastly, last is the strategic, strategic communication. So they will pursue comprehensive and proactive communication strategies for the agri-fishery sector and to strengthen awareness among stakeholders, partners, and the public. So uh, those are the three strategies under the uh, four pillars of the DA to achieve the food secure and resilient Philippines. So, so the focus also is to uh, attain a prosper a prosperous farmer and fisher pool. So uh, that's my uh, th that's my sharing on the programs of the related to food security. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joe Marie, uh Panaga. So we will meet hear more from him during the open forum. Our next discussion is Mr. Uh, Jason Paolo Labrador, um, a registered nutritionist dietitian and a science research specialist uh, from the Nutrition Research and Development Group of the uh, Food and Nutrition uh, Research Institute, which is uh, under the Department of Science and Technology. So he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Nutrition at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. He is currently completing his Master of Science in Public Health and at the UERM Graduate School. And his work um, at DOST FNRI involves uh, research and development on life stage nutrition and developing nutrition tools, guidelines, and standards. So for Mr. Labrador, I uh, would like to know the policy options and strategies that FNRI can recommend 
um, that FNRI can recommend to address the worsening food insecurity in the country, which, which as we all know, increases the risk of malnutrition. So Mr. Labrador, you now have the floor. Thank you very much, Ma'am Shilia, for the kind um, introduction. A good afternoon to everyone. Let me share my slide first. Mm -hmm. Am I sharing? Yes, the, we can see your. Yes, we can see your. Uh, am I sharing the correct slide? Thank you very much. Um, but before anything else, I would like to thank um the PIDS uh, led by Dr. Um, Dr. Arbeta Jr. And of, of course, we would like to congratulate um from Ivory Mike Galang for this profound and timely study on assessing our food security objective. And um. Just last week, uh, countries all around the world celebrated the uh, 2022 World Food Day, which is being marked as a year uh, with varying degrees of challenges, including, of course, the yet ongoing pandemic. We also experience um, variability in climate, in climate um, slowdowns in economic activities, and witness international context and tensions. All of this is affecting our national and global food security. And uh, from the definition earlier, uh, it, it reveals the uh, multi multi-dimensionality nature of food security. So earlier we discussed um, availability, access, utilization, and stability. And uh, for food security to be, to be fully achieved, all four dimensions must be met simultaneously, right? And uh, that requirement is quite strict, but um, that only reflects how critical and complex this topic is. And how food insecurity can cause a number of interrelated uh, issues from just comparing the uh, ability of people to acquire food until it became a it until it becomes a primary driver for hunger and as we know being hungry is the extreme consequence of food insecurity and um thus food insecurity threatens nutritional status of an individual of a household or of a country the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development signifies and focus on achieving a world without hunger and malnutrition by 2030. In particular, SDG2 give a special emphasis to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture by 2030. And the Philippines fully supports this ambition and effort to launch bold actions towards the attainment of SDGs. As a commitment to this, uh, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute as the primary arm of the government, Philippine government for food and nutrition research guided by its uh, mandate to conduct studies that define the citizen's nutritional status, determine its causes and effects, and identify and recommend appropriate solutions to address the issues of malnutrition, provides estimates of our food security status. It's one of the survey components of our Philippine National Nutrition Survey since 2001 uh, as a response to the need for reliable and timely food security information to help identify and locate food deprived populations. In fact, in this, uh, in the P in this PIDS report, FNRI was cited as one of the data sources used to establish the food security dimensions to be utilized in this paper specifically under food utilization dimension with sub-focus on food consumption and food quality. And um, by the information and data generated from the National Nutrition Survey, we can now have a real sense of the reality of our nutrition situation. But we should not only acknowledge the result of the prevalence of the magnitude of food security, but we should understand the characteristics of those who are food insecure. No? Uh, ano, ano ba sila? Sino, sino ba sila? So based on the results of the expanded NNS 2018-2019, food security was higher in first rural areas, no? um, in households with uh, males as their heads, in poor households, in um, households with heads with lower education, educational attainment, um, those households without financial assistance receiving from abroad, and ironically, no, um, those households with engaged in agriculture. So these conditions limits their chances to overcome the vicious cycle of hunger, of food insecurity, and malnutrition. And from here, um, we can now 
um, use meaningful results to better utilize, craft our goals, commitments, and policy directions. And of course, to plan and implement the fusion programs uh, and other, uh, and in monitoring and evaluation impact of nutrition programs. Now, going to, in, going to our insights to some topics tackled in, in the PIDS report, the some sharing of FNRI innovative solutions. Um, first, on food availability, uh, as agricultural productivity increases, so I use a direct quote from, from the report, um, there tends to be higher opportunities for people to satisfy their nutrient needs by diversifying diets. And I just want to react on this, banking on diversification of diets, we need to create strategies to promote a food production and distribution system that has been shaped not only to alleviate um, constraints in food supply, but should also relate um, to diversifying diets. And the more varied the diet, the higher the possibility that the different nutrients will be met. This relates also to the food utilization dimension of food security. And when we say um, eat a variety of foods every day, no, it's not just a simple message. Um, it's actually the first key message of the nutritional guidelines for Filipinos developed by FNRI and various stakeholders in 2012, which is an evidence-based guideline intended to contribute to many desired nutritional outcomes, including food and nutrition security. Thus, um, this message alone can be used as basis by our policymakers and other concerned institutions to promote diversified um, food production and distribution. And, um, in, and also include this principle to our forthcoming um, strategic food and nutrition action plan or the, uh, the, the P plan. And um, in terms on um, food accessibility, um, in the PIDS report, uh, it was stated that calorie adequate diet is more affordable to Philippine households than nutrient adequate diets. And uh, as seen with the presentation earlier, it was again reported that you know, more starchy staples are commonly bought by the families. And looking into the 2018, 2019 food consumption survey, you know, um, the usual diet pattern of a Filipino is usually ri uh, rice, uh, fish and vegetables. And uh, however, due to unaffordability, many Philippine households are unable to consume nutrient adequate diets leading to poor health status. And um, to address this, uh, our agency, the OSFNRI, is uh, currently implementing a project dubbed as OptiDiets, which, is, which aims to develop a web-based analysis tool to optimize uh, low-cost and nutritionally adequate diets for Filipinos through the use of um, linear programming. And soon enough, after its development and validation, uh, Opted Diets will be a user-friendly web tool that can automate meal planning of diets with minimum cost while still satisfying um, energy and nutrient requirements through linear uh, optimization. In terms of uh, food utilization, um, I also re read in the PIDS report that it says um, community and families cannot consume a healthy diet unless healthy foods are available, affordable, and uh, convenient. And um, even if we have access to those, um, the next question is, does it guarantee that families will choose to buy or select healthy foods to consume? So part of transforming our strategy is to also address consumer behavior and their receptiveness to health and nutrition education. And uh, central to behavior change is the skill of good decision-making. And uh, citing the Malnutrition Reduction Program, or the MRP no, of the OSC FNRI, as, as an example, so which is a science-based initiative that seeks to address the high prevalence of malnutrition among Filipino children. So this is a sample of a package of intervention. And uh, this fits with the policy recommendation that was discussed earlier. And, um, it consists of a package of two intervention strategy. First, the technology transfer of, compl uh, of complementary food technology developed of FNRI and uh, rolled out um, all over the country. So establishing food production facilities for dust FNRIs um, developed food products in partnership with various LGUs. And then second, it also involves direct feeding of uh, rice mongo based uh, complementary foods for six months to below three years old, while providing nutrition education among mothers and caregivers. So here we can we can uh, we are not just making complementary food available and accessible to children, 
but we also provide opportunities taking into consideration other causes of malnutrition, such as um, healthcare, access to safe water, hygiene, adequate caring, and uh, feeding practices through nutrition education. And that's uh, very important. Also, so, uh, food stability. Um, as we experience it all, the COVID-19 pandemic made the pathway towards food security even steeper. And um, the Rapid Nutrition Assessment Survey, or RNAS, you know, conducted by FNRI, the height of COVID-19 infections, showed that 6 out of 10 households, or 62.1% in the country, experienced uh, moderate to severe food insecurity during the pandemic. And the issue on food insecurity among uh, rural population that are generally engaged in uh, agriculture has been exacerbated by the pandemic since findings also in the RNAS set, uh, uh, states that the impact of food insecurity was higher um, in low and moderate cover, uh, COVID risk areas where they are located. Um, note, however, in the presented comparison of pre-pandemic and pandemic food security status earlier in uh, Ma'am Galang's slide, uh, in the 2020 RNAS, the tool used to measure food security is the FIES, or the Food Insecurity Experience Scale, which is a different tool used in 2018-2019 um, NNS, uh, which is the HFIES, or the Household Food Insecurity Access um, Scale. Going back, um, it should also be considered with equal importance and ensure risk-informed management vulnerabilities and shocks that is resilient, equipped, and adaptive to health emergencies, food crisis, and economic downturns. This is to reduce and prevent risk of to foods insecurity and to ensure a steady supply of, nutrition, of nutritious foods during the times of vulnerability, shocks, and stresses. And, and in fact, um, FNRI acknowledged, when we are in the pandemic, FNRI acknowledged this period could also look upon as an opportunity to harness new ways of creating new technologies, just like um, the re enhanced and reformulated Nutriban of the 70s, uh, as, a, as a response to the call of the SWD for the continuous uh, Im implementation of the supplementary feeding program during community quarantines. Now, um, from our own reflections, um, let's uh, let's ask the uh, let's ask the, these questions. Um, what do we have that could be reinforced? and what to do more. Um, let's go first to reinforce food availability. Uh, we need to first mobilize the community to do home and community food production programs, no? such as a backyard or community school, uh, urban vegetables, uh, gardens, no? uh, or some could go to poultry or livestock raising to foster self food self-sufficiency. Um, food innovation through food preservations to lessen food, food wastages since it is also tied uh, food wastage is also tied with food insecurity and also support farmers and businesses in terms of post-harvest and mechanization of agricultural products um, to reinforce food access, uh, install programs for communities on sustainable livelihood that would enable households to gain profit or other resources to purchase food, and uh, also uh, the establishment of food innovation centers in LGUs. To reinforce food utilization, um, we need to continue R&D on the natural enrichments of food, um, LGUs to strengthen nutrition in simple, uh, strengthen nutrition programs, those that are evidence-based, age-specific, so we need to use um, life stage nutrition approach and problem-focused. Uh, problem Promote good nutrition in simple messages, and of course, uh, employ RNDs at the municipal level for the implementation of nutrition programs, since kung meron mang um, primary actors, for nutrition education, these are the RNDs. And for food stability, um, strengthen collaboration efforts with other agencies and other stakeholders and transform food system to become sustainable and uh, nutrition sensitive. And uh, today with less than 10 years remaining to achieve uh, sustainable development goals, our journey beyond, uh, we need of course first uh, broad and multi-level strategies from various actors and stakeholders and um, FNRI as a research and the research development institute, of course, we cannot do our mission alone. So we call uh, for steer greater research and development efforts. And lastly, um, advocate sustainable nutrition-sensitive food system 
towards a food uh, secured nation. And with that, I end my uh, reaction and presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, let's connect. Uh, for more food and nutrition uh, information, you may visit our various social media um, pages in Facebook, uh, in, in also in our YouTube, and visit also our um, website and IFNRI website. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Labrador, for your insightful uh, remarks. No, So we will hear more from him during the open forum. So if you have questions or um, or um, comments about his uh, present presentation, then please uh, just, just use our uh, Q&A uh, box. Okay. So um, let's talk a bit more about uh, fighting malnutrition. No? And our last, for our last discussion, we have another nutritionist dietitian, this time from the National Nutrition Council, or the NNC. And so let us welcome Ms. Ellen Ruth Abelia, the officer in charge of NNC's Nutrition Surveillance Division. She has 28 years of experience in public health nutrition, specifically in nutrition program management. And um, her work as a nutrition officer at the NNC involves developing guidelines to improve the assessment, monitoring, and evaluation of nutrition programs. She has a bachelor's uh, degree in community, community nutrition from uh, UP Diliman and a master's degree in public management from the Ateneo School of Government. We greatly appreciate hearing uh, uh, Ms. Abelia's reaction to the study and at the same time her thoughts on how the country can effectively address uh, malnutrition. How can we make nutrient-rich food accessible to Filipino households, especially to low-income groups? Ma'am, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Ms. Sheila. Um, in behalf of the management of the National Nutrition Council, we would like to congratulate PIDS for holding this uh, public webinars to engage the public in uh, finding solutions to current issues. So this afternoon, we have heard from Ms. Kalang that food security plays a crucial role in attaining nutrition security. In this conceptual framework of malnutrition, uh, food security complements with adequate, complemented with adequate care and feeding practices and behavior, water, sanitation, and hygiene, food safety, adequate health services, and active healthy lifestyle results to good nutrition. As evidenced by various studies, good nutrition among pregnant women and during the early childhood influence the likelihood of these children to grow up as healthy and productive adults with optimal uh, intellectual skills, creativity, and well-being. This was also cited in the study presented by Ms. Maika. Um, Ms. Galang also discussed in her presentation the challenges uh, across uh, implementing or uh, meeting the four dimensions of food security. Indeed, there is a need to improve the food systems to ensure food availability, food is accessible, um, and it is used so optimally by our bodies, and the food supply is always stable. In 2021, the United Nations Food System Summit stressed the pressing need for an equitable food system through the, its transformation involving the food supply chain, which includes socioeconomic and environmental outcomes. The food supply chain approach includes all the stages and actors for both from both the public and private sectors, from the production, trade, processing, retail, marketing, consumption, and waste disposal. The Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition for 2023-2028, which is in its last phase of formulation, is the country's blueprint for all nutrition actions. The plan recognizes that the food supply chain is anchored or should be anchored on ecological, human, energy, and economic systems, wherein livelihood must be provided for those who work at various points along the production to distribution continuum. The decision of the various actors involved in the food supply chain will influence food availability, accessibility, utilization, and stability, the four dimensions of food security. The PPAN emphasized the need for a sustainable and resilient food supply chain 
which considers climate change adaptation and mitigation, sustainable use and management of natural resources, improved storage, processing, packaging, transformation, and reformulation, and improved nutrition and health of farm and food systems workers. As we feel the effects of COVID-19 on our economy, paired with rising food price prices, low-income households will bear the brunt of food insecurity. It must be noted that initiatives across all sectors of the government are being done to address food insecurity as well as malnutrition. These initiatives are included in the PPAN. In terms of food availability, we can always go back to the basics, that is home and community food production, but utilizing agriculture technologies where in communities and homes will can maintain gardens where they can harvest fruits and vegetables for their home consumption. And this is paired with raising of uh, small animals and ruminants as their source of protein. The Department of Agriculture has a production sub support subprogram, uh, which was mentioned uh, a while ago, wherein they will provide seeds, planting materials, small animals, farm supplies, inputs, uh, like uh, pesticides and, and uh, fertilizers, among others. These production inputs are cascaded to the local government units for distribution in the community, prioritizing those in the lower income groups. Additionally, the Department of Education also has the Gulayan sa Paarlan program in all public schools, which aims to provide food commodities in schools through self-help food production activities. And lastly, along urban agriculture, uh, which should be promoted and the existing ones is strengthened together with diversified agriculture production to increase food availability. To support availability of nutrient-dense um, food, food fortification and reformulation of commonly consumed food should be strengthened. Um, currently, the DOH implements the mandatory food fortification program, which involves the mandatory addition of one or more nutrients to rice, flour, and cooking oil. This is stipulated or, or provided in RA8976 or the Philippine Fortific Food Fortification Act as end to all end iodine in salt as provided in RA8172 or as in law. In terms of food accessibility, we can address food security through food assistance. This is a direct initiative, such as the Dietary Supplementation Program, which aims to supplement inadequate diets of nutritionally vulnerable groups. Again, particularly for pregnant women and children 6 to 23 months old in food insecure households. Please note that these meals given in supplementation programs will not replace or does not replace one meal of its uh, intended um, beneficiaries. It's just, it is to supplement their diet. The dietary supplementation program for wasted school children through the school-based feeding program of DepEd and the supplementation program for children in daycare centers through the supplementary feeding program of DSWD, um, as provided also in RA11037 or the Masustansyang Pagkain para sa Batang Pilipino Act, um, also provides uh, additional access to, uh, to cheaper or to uh, nutritious food. And during emergencies, access to nutrition, nutritious food should also be ensured either through provision of relief packs or uh, providing access to food subsidies. Provision of nutrition services and commodities should also should not be hampered for, uh, for populations or groups which are affected by a disaster or emergency, uh, particularly during the response and recovery phases. This is, which also includes emergency preparedness to ensure that the, capac that the capacities are there for uh, responders to be able to provide services um, to the LGUs. 
conditional cash transfers could also increase food accessibility among low-income households, such as the four Ps or the Pantawid Familia uh, program of the SWD, which provides cash grants to the poorest segments of the population to improve health, nutrition, and education outcomes for children 0 to 18 years old. Um, to improve the purchasing power of poor households, the DSWD also implements the Sustainable Livelihood Program, or SLP, which is a community-based capacity building program that provides the source of livelihood to improve their socioeconomic status. Lastly, to increase food affordability, the Department of Trade and Industry, together with manufacturers of necessities and prime commodities, implement the Discuento Caravan, which aims to provide consumers with reasonably priced products lower than the retail prices. Um, uh, affordability also can be done through the presence of Bagsakan or trading posts of or Kadiwa through the Department of Agriculture. These trading posts or Bagsakan minimizes the role of middlemen or the presence of middlemen um, which lowers or makes the price of agriculture products more affordable to the consumers. To improve food utilization, health and nutrition literacy are the, of the population must be strengthened. Um, the NNC coordinates the National Nutrition Program uh, Promotion Program for Behavior Change, which aims to facilitate the adoption of positive practices that will impact on nutrition, highlighting the interplay of interpersonal communication, community communication, mass media, and social media, which will also engage media organizer or practitioners to actively disseminate correct key nutrition messages. And then the NNC also coordinates the overweight and obesity management and prevention program, which involves the promotion of healthy eating environments and healthy lifestyle, including management of those who are already overweight and obese. Another initiative would, would be the in, infant and young child feeding program, which aims to improve the practice of exclusive breastfeeding and complementary feeding by building and sustaining an enabling environment in various settings. This is mandated or provided for by RA 11148 or the Kalusugan at Nutrition ng Magnanay Act. In addition, to promote in in addition to promotive initiatives, direct interventions focused on improving the nutritional status of the population must be continued. Some initiatives include the micronutrient supplementation program implemented by DOH and LGUs, which focuses on the provision of pharmaceutically prepared vitamins and minerals for treatment and prevention of specific micronutrient deficiencies to complement sustainable food-based approaches addressing deficiencies in micronutrient. Additionally, we also have the Philippine Integrated Management of Acute Malnutrition Program in the local government units through the DOH, which aims to provide the needed medical and nutritional intervention to children who are acutely malnourished, including those who are severe or those who are, are severe acute, uh, have severe acute malnutrition cases. Um, these uh, mentioned programs are not exhaustive of all existing programs or initi government initiatives to address food security. But it's worth to note that all the programs mentioned hopes to address inequities in food security by providing access to the said services according to the needs and capacities of the areas. According to the 2020 Go Global Nutrition Report, ensuring a sustainable food system is the mainstreaming or to ensure a sustainable food system, we must mainstream nutrition in all its elements. Hence, multi-sector collaboration and coordination is a must. Addressing food security is not limited to the national government or local government units alone. Interested parties, whether with existing related pro programs or none, from the academe, business sectors, 
civil service organizations, our donors or development partners, even the youth um, can join the movement through the scaling up nutrition networks led by the National Nutrition Council. So in closing, let me leave you with three things. One, we can ensure food and security, nutrition, and um, it should start at home. Second, initiatives should address inequities in food security um, by providing for those who really need them, um, especially the low-income households. And third, for us to realize, um, also for low-income households to realize their right to food and nutrition, and for us to reach our potential to shape sustainable and prosperous societies. And lastly, let us sustain our food system by mainstreaming nutrition in all its elements. Thus, multi-sectoral collaboration and coordination is a must. Together, we can transform our food system and achieve food and nutrition security for all. Sabi nga namin sa NNC and our partners, nutrisyong sapat para sa lahat. Magandang hapon po. At magandang hapon din po, uh, Ms. Uh, Ruth Abelia of the National Nutrition Council for discussing those programs that are meant to address food security and malnutrition, which are complex problems, no? does require uh, strategic so solutions, no? strategic solutions using a whole of government and a whole of society approach. No? So after listening to the presentation of our speaker and the reactions and insights of our discussions, it's, it's time to hear from our audience. But uh, initially, let's dwell on some important points underscored in the study, which were also flagged by uh, our uh, some of our participants. No? Um, one of which is yung in, in terms of improving food availability and accessibility, both uh, Mr. Labrador and Ms. Abelia mentioned no? uh, that one way to do this is to mobilize home and community food production programs. Uh, we received a... Um, okay. Um, we have this comment from Mildred Girindola. Sabi niya, home food production is easier said than done. How can we entice households to plant their own food and raise uh, small animals uh earlier i think miss abelia mentioned about you know um the support given by uh the department of agriculture in terms of providing um free seeds no even i think uh small farm animals no um miss panaga mr uh sorry mr jomari panaga of the da would you like to expound uh on on uh the current the current initiatives by the Department of Agriculture in terms of um, enticing our households to go into uh, home home food production. Um, yes, ma'am. So under our high value crops development program, uh, we distribute free seeds uh, to the to communities who want who want to uh, grow their own. Uh, for example, vegetables like uh, eggplant um, and other uh, fruit vegetables, okra, etc. So uh, we also provide uh, some uh, some household tools which they can use, and also um, uh, minimal um, minimal amount of soil which they can start, which they can use to for to grow their crops so uh, that's one of the initiatives or subsidies that the da provides to incentivize uh, people who wants to grow their own food especially in, in the urban areas okay thank you for your response uh okay so at this point let us uh go to the other questions uh in our chat box okay um Okay. Um, okay, just, first let's yes, yes, please go ahead. Um, Ma'am Sheila, I just want to add with the answer yes. of Sir Joe Marie. Actually, yeah, yeah, I, please. I agree with, with Ma'am Mildred. It's home food production is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And um actually um quite some time I'm really careful with you know uh, advising do home food production because it's not just about planting food, raising animals. Mm. It's somehow a technical thing, you need a technical knowledge to do that. Otherwise, 
mamamatay din yung plant, um, hindi rin uh, okay, hindi rin lalaki ng mabuti yung mga faulty if you have not, uh, don't have technical knowledge about this. So aside from um, DAs uh, providing seeds or um, providing um, uh, support, so we really need to um, provide technical knowledge then kahit pa paano siguro by especially now no, by means of um, webinar, by means of uh, just to empower um, and uh, just to empower families and to realize the importance of home food production and uh, giving them also yung capability na sustain yung kanilang home food production. So yun lang naman. Thank you for that. Uh, I recall a webinar that we had uh, months ago wherein there was a presentation from uh, the circa director you know, on urban agriculture. Uh, urban uh, food gardens, no. And in his presentation, he mentioned some, um, you know, very good practices that he found that that Circa found, wherein they engaged the LGUs, the mm -hmm. local government units. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you, okay. I saw Jason and even uh, Mom Ruth nodding her, <laughs> nodding her head. Mom Ruth, would you like to, yes, uh, um... you know? Yes, Ms. Sheila, I would like to add to the comment or sharing ni, ni Jason. Um, one way I think to entice people to, to go into home food production is to, to share with them successful practices or good practices like the one in Quezon City. Um, it's really urban, Quezon City ito. Um, they were able to, to set up a garden on top of their roof. So, and even in some areas in Santa Rosa, Laguna, which is also urbanized na, um, we saw a, we were able to visit a house na meron siya talagang isang buong garden yeah, na talagang na, nabuo niya yun, um, pinag, pinagtulungan nilang mag-aanak mag na mag, mag bitbit ng lupa na sa taas ng kanilang ng bahay para makapagtanim sila ng papaya. Uh, sa, sa bubong. So, they used uh, mga used na mga gamit um, which can be uh, um, pwedeng gawin ng mga kababayan natin. Um, I think tama din po si Sir Jason na meron siyang technical side in doing mm -hmm. home food production. Hindi siya basta-basta kumuha ka ng lupa, magtanim ka ng, ng seeds at tutubo yan at magkakaroon ka ng sarili mong um, edible garden. Uh, tama po yun. So, kailangan po talaga ng tulong ng Department of Agriculture, not necessarily sa central office, pero yun po mga, uh, mga agriculture office sa ating mga local government units. Sila po yung mas pinakamalaking role, yung mga extension workers po natin, agriculture extension workers. They really have a big role in uh, providing these technical inputs to make food uh, home food production successful for those who are interested. Uh, marami na po tayong mga technologies na um, present ngayon na hindi kailangan ng malaking lupa para magkaroon ka ng, ng garden. Um, so ang kailangan lang po siguro ay uh, ipromote itong mga technologies na ito sa lahat ng mga pamamaraan, social media, sa TikTok, mag-feature ka ng, sa TikTok mo ng paano magtanim ng uh, papaya or kamote or whatever na, na gusto mong uh, vegetable na itanim. So, maaari iyon. Um, nasa creativity on how to promote and how to entice uh, people to go into home food production. Thank you, po. Thank you, Ma'am Ellen. Uh, Ms. Ivory, would you have anything to say to contribute to the discussion or let's say any uh, thing that uh, you may want to uh, um, as your response also to the comments or to the reactions of our discussion sa iyong presentation kanina. Yes, Ma'am Sheila. Actually, we have a question here kanina nga regarding uh, din dyan sa urban garden. And I've been asked about that sa mga previous din na presentations. Why not parang encourage nga itong urban garden? Pero sinabi nga din ng isa nating commenter na madali lang siyang sabihin, kailangan siya ng effort ng uh, bawat household. Imagine if you're a working mom, um, busy ka na sa mga anak mo, busy ka na sa work mo, um, ma, ma, la, mapaglalaanan mo po ba ng oras ang plants? 
So, isa to sa parang um, pwede din nating tingnan na hindi tayo lahat pare-pareho na may oras na maglaan or may green thumb na tinatawag. Halimbawa, ako meron akong plant sa bahay pero hindi ko siya ma- ma- ma-sustain. <laughs> so, iniisip ko, what if magtanim ako ng mga gulay on my own? So, ito nga yung sinasabi kanina ni, ni Sir Jason na kailangan may technical knowledge ka. Hindi pwedeng basta bumili ka lang ng seed, nagtanim ka. So, kailangan paglaanan mo siya ng oras, aralin mo siya. So, ito yung mga um, kung talagang gusto natin siyang gawin, um, pwede naman. Basta um, paglaanan natin siya ng panahon. At saka, given also the limited space ano, in urban areas, so may mga, may mga particular technologies na, okay, para lang, let's say, sa mga pots, hindi naman pwedeng, wala naman talagang ample land no? uh, to go into that. no So, yeah, maganda itong uh, i-promote, but at the same time, sabi nga ni Mr. Uh, Jason, ano, may kaitibat ito na na uh, pag-aaral at pagsasanay no na dapat uh, ibigay no okay so another thing okay let's go to FNRI because as we all know FNRI you've been uh, developing mga nutritious uh, food products no and um naisip ko lang ano i think one way to partner with the uh, one way to promote the those nutritious uh, food products that you have developed no is to partner with let's say the private sector such as restaurants hotels mga school canteens to adapt those you know yung mga technologies nyo meron po bang ganitong initiative ang FNRI uh, yes ma'am Sheila actually we value yung pag um, partner sa ating mga hindi lang mga kapwa government institutions but also private uh, also the private sectors so, hindi ko lang alam um, kung pwede i-mention yung mga iba since uh, may mga brands or whatsoever. But um, there are supermarkets and there are uh, food establishments talaga na nag adapt ng pinggang Pinoy or ng um, uh, mga pindong Pinoy seals sa kanilang mga supermarkets. Also, uh, right now in our section, um, we're implementing also a uh, model intervention program intended for a school-based nutrition program. So um yung intention kasi nito um hopefully after makita yung uh, effectiveness even in the preliminary study ma-adapt ng uh, kanya-kanyang schools no actually that ed as a whole sana. So uh, as we see um we're not only doing um supplementary feeding inside the school but we want to see those children familiar sa mga pagkain sa mga gulay at prutas um, familiar sa concept ng, um, ng ano ba yung stunting, ano ba yung overweight, underweight. Kasi um, if we start in um, in younger age, they will carry it all throughout their lives. So um, marami pong initiatives ang DOST FNRI kasakabi, kasama po yung mga um, private uh, private sectors po. And um, in terms of also of our um, developed food products um actually in our office we have an uh, an office designated for technology transfers of our uh, developed products and um uh, yun po yung pinapalaganap sa um, all around all across the country so our uh, food technology food, food technologies will be diffused and be adopted by lgus by local um, entrepreneurs and um uh, local trades po okay thank you thank you very much uh Mr. Jason. Okay, let's go to, may mga katanungan po tayo dito, uh, particularly po sa Department of Agriculture. Okay, um, from Kyle uh, Crisel Dalma, um, tinatanong niya, mayroon mga inisyatibo ba ang kagawaran para sa issue ng food security gaya ng pagpapataas ng produksyon at pagbibigay ng akas sa capital? So, nais niyang itanong uh, kung paano natin nasisigurong efficient ang implementasyon dito. Okay? Uh, we are, uh, this question is for our representative from the Department of Agriculture. Mr. Panaga, please. Uh, yes. So, uh, so, we can ensure efficiency uh, by uh, targeting yung uh, beneficiary. So, we have the list uh, through the R- RB and uh, registry system for agriculture RSDS. in the 
Yeah. Or for, yeah. Um, so, on the uh, regional level and local level. So, uh, once the farmers uh, or fisher folk registered there, there, so we can we can target the appropriate uh, intervention. So, that's one of the uh, method where we can ensure efficiency. But of course, uh, after the implementation, uh, we can also commission third parties to conduct impact assessment, so we, so we can uh, um, un determine the efficiency. So unbiased na opinion naman. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Joa Marino. Regarding the man uh, uh, threat of the African swine fever or ASF, no. Um, there's a question here from one of our Facebook viewers, Serena Ramos. Are we now? Tanunya is, are we in the clear with ASF until the end of the year? Chomari? Um, regarding sa ASF, ma'am, uh, we still have cases, but that trend is uh, already uh, pababa na, lowering na. So, uh, we have established yung, through collaboration with the regions and local government, yung mga uh, uh, para, uh, control borders to prevent yung local spread ng ASF. So, okay. so yun, medyo nagre-rebound na rin yung uh, population and yung disease incidents, medyo nakakontrol na rin ng Bureau of Animal Industry. Okay, okay. Um, okay, regarding the uh, the implementation of providing seeds to urban areas, uh, Maricel Solatra wants to know the contribution of this program to the overall production of the country. So, Marie? Um, at this moment, ma'am, I'm not really aware of any studies that uh, measure the contribution of that program to the overall food security, ma'am. So maybe uh, we can search and uh, once we found uh, any relevant documents, we can share po. Okay. Salamat po. Okay. Um, okay. Let me... We have one, uh, still uh, a number of questions here. Okay, um, I think this is still for you, uh, Jo Marino. Are the increasing importation rates or the general direction of food systems threatening the contribution and relevance rural actors have in our agriculture systems? How does this slow shift affect the outlook on food uh, availability? The general tone today, including the paper suggestion on trade liberalization and suggested priority on home slash community production seems to shift the responsibility of food production from domestic production elsewhere. Okay. In short, uh, how much of a priority are our small heart? Older rural farmers. This is from Jose Paolo Echavez. Jo Marie, would you like uh, to take a crack on this question? Yes, ma'am. So the government balances the interests of uh, the consumers and the producers. So uh, while we are importing the, for example, in the rice, we are importing rice. The tariffs we collect from uh, our, from from the importation of rice, we use this to. Um, provide in support and subsidies to our rice farmers. So uh, there's a balance uh, between the local production and also importation. Uh, also, because we are obliged under the uh, World Trade Organization so to, for, to, for our uh, international commitments, but also we also recognize um, the importance of our local producers. Okay. Um... Ivory, we have several questions here. You know, one of um, some of which are related to the our Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization Act. No, and since you have been involved in that project, no, um, assessing the AFMA, perhaps you can provide your insights to some of these questions. No, uh, from Ian Ezekiel Amira Amirali, uh, he's he he asked, why is the Philippines food production still labor intensive? This despite the passage of the Agriculture Fisheries Modernization Act. Kagaya nga nung nakita niyo, niyo ni na Dr. Uh, Ruel uh, Briones, no? meron naman, nag-modernize din naman, no? pero it's still not enough. Uh, hindi pa rin talaga na-achieve yung uh, objectives ng ACMA, no? Yes, Ma'am Sheila. If I may add, um, 
yung ating mga small holders, uh, yung mga small farmers kasi natin, andun pa rin sila sa basic, yung pa rin yung pinaproblema nila, yung lupa, yung kapital. So, kumbaga, uh, nandun pa sa mas mababang um, listahan nila yung yung pag-invest sa um, modern na uh, mga makinarya. Um, kumbaga, sana ma- matugunan muna natin yung mga basic nilang pangangailangan para makamove sila dun sa um, iba pang uh, mga technology na dapat i-adapt nila yung iba pa nilang mga pangangailangan para um, mapataas yung kanilang um, kaalaman sa mas ma- uh, maayos na uh, production. Kasi, alimbawa, sa DA, marami silang mga knowledge na um, knowledge sharing, yung mga uh, mm-hmm. extension activities para mas efficient. Alimbawa, yung paggamit ng mga abono, paggamit ng ibang mga um, uh, um, pesticides. So, nag, uh, may mga advice, may mga suggestions. Pati din yung paggamit ng mas uh, ma, mainam na mga um, variety ng mga um, crops. So, um, uh, hindi pa rin talaga nahirapan sila kasi nga andun pa rin sila sa mga basic problems. Okay. Um, in, in terms naman of the support of the LGUs, no? uh, sa study na nakita ninyo how are LGUs um helping helping our farmers in uh in their production in order to avoid shortages and surplus um uh depende sa LGU kung ang mm-hmm. LGU ay um malaki yung agri may posibilidad na nabibigyan ng prioridad yung um, agriculture dun sa kanilang nasasakupan. Unfortunately, para sa ibang mga LGUs um, na maliit lang yung share ng um, agriculture, um, hirap yung kanilang mga farmers sa pagkuha ng support. Kasi nga, iba yung priority ng LGU ngayon. So para dun sa mga LGUs na agri um yung focus nila um mm-hmm. yun nga tulad ng nabanggit ko kanina meron din mga extension services na ino-offer oh. yung mga LGUs para matulungan um yung ating mga farmers unfortunately um yung um, human resources ng mga LGUs to really go to the farmers um kaunti lang hindi nakakasapat kaya nahihirapan din yung mga um, yung ating mga um, extension workers na abutin lahat kasi nga kulang sila kakaunti lamang po sila okay thank you very much uh, Ivory no Mr Panaga Chomari would you like to uh, um, provide your your answers no um, since we are talking here of uh, um, productivity helping our farmers Um, yes, ma'am. I, I agree with the comments po of uh, Ms. Ivory. So, uh, medyo mahirap pa yung adoption ng technology sa farm level. Uh, specifically, yung uh, one of the problems is yung uh, small farms, farm farm lots. So, uh, we will if we introduce machineries, hindi magiging hindi magiging uh, efficient yung product, yung use ng machinery. Uh, kailangan nung ano economies of scale kailangan mas kailangan mag-consolidate ng farm lots to uh, to to achieve yung efficiency and also to for the farmers to have a net benefit sa pag yung gastos nila in terms of utilization of uh, the specific technology or equipment Okay. Thank you. Um, in in uh, Ivory's presentation, ano, when she discussed about the framework, no. So in in terms of um, uh, food availability and food accessibility, na banggit niya yung sa logistics and transport. So we have a question here for you, Jo Marie, for the DA, no, from Chino Cairo Serrano, and um, sabi niya, are there any long-term plans to improve our transport mechanisms? 
Almost every year, there's uh, news of over oversupply of certain agricultural products that sadly either ends up as a food waste or pushes farmers to sell their products at lower prices. Or Palugina, does DA have any long-term plans to improve our transport mechanisms to avoid these things from happening? Um, based on our current plans, ma'am, uh, I can say that uh, we have current plan and also long-term plan. So we've been uh, building uh, farm-to-market roads and also we've, uh, through the Kadiwa or Ikadiwa, we've been connecting uh, local produce to the consumers. So, ano na yun, uh, diretsyo na, parang wala ng middleman. And also, for for the long-term plan, uh, I, th I believe we will uh, be we have plans on constructing a cold storage facility so we can store our goods there. And also uh, in relation to the mandates of FNRI to uh, capacitate also young farmers to, uh, to uh, on value adding activities. For example, in tomatoes, they can uh, uh, preserve on um, preservation techniques on, on tomatoes and also what other value added products they can produce uh, by using those uh, tomatoes, which uh, if not sold fresh, uh, will just go to the way, will just go to waste. So that's, uh, that's um, uh, those are the possible programs to address uh, food waste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw uh, Mr. Jason nodding his head because part of their uh, functions nga sa FNR ay yung, yung sa food processing, no? Uh, Mr. Jason, please. Um, yes, Mr. Jomer. Um, interestingly, the USC FNRI, um, part of um, functions po ng Nutrition Food Research and Development Division is uh, also look into uh, food preservation technologies as ways to lessen food waste stage, as, as we know. Also, in in-depth studies from the National Nutrition Survey, food waste suggests and food insecurity are tied. And um, uh, interestingly, yung FNRI po ay may mga food preservation um, technologies na po that uh, not only prolong shelf life, but also to maintain yung nutrition um, yung nutrition content ng, ng food so hindi nawawala. So mayroon, and uh, also you mentioned uh, tomatoes. Um, in recent years, si FNRI meron siyang mga studies on phytochemicals, on uh, on GABA. So, um, uh, using yung mga um, fresh produce and even yung mga prolonged na, na tomato. And so, ito yung mga, ano, ito yung mga technologies na na-develop ng FNRI na makakatulong sa pagbababa ng food wastages dito po sa atin. Salamat, uh, Mr. Jason. No? Uh, Chomari, you mentioned kanina yung uh, uh, one way to improve our uh, logistics no? is to build more farm-to-market roads. No? That is very, is, uh, those, yung, yung in, infrastructure, infrastructure na yun, very essential. And um, farm-to-market farm roads, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, devolved function na siya. No? Um, Actually, under the Mandanas ruling, ano na siya eh, talagang dinibog na siya. So how can we ensure na talagang okay, given that this responsibility uh, is already uh, in the hands of our local government units, how can we ensure that talagang magkakaroon tayo ng mas maraming uh, farm-to-market roads? No? Of course, um, with uh, our LGUs, uh, with a great higher LGUs or with more revenues, no? Uh, given to our LGUs, syempre meron naman silang uh, pondo para dito. Chomari, um, may mga ano ba? Paano natin uh, ma-intensify ma itong mga farm-to-market roads? Especially na nasa hands na ito ng LGUs ngayon as part of the durable functions. Uh, Ma'am, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, based on my recollection, I think that the DA still... Uh, is the still the implementing agency in terms of uh, building FMRs for, or farm to market mm -hmm. roads? Uh, the role of LGUs based on the local government code, I think, is uh, more on consultation or more on planning on where to where to place or where to build those FMRs. So I think uh, national government still has uh, 
uh, important role to play and also very important the role of LG, LGUs in terms of uh, planning. So, so, so that's my answer, ma'am. Thank you. Ah, okay. Um, Ivory, would you have anything to contribute? Yes, ma'am. Um, as mentioned by Sir Jomar, um, kung yung planning ay nasa ating LGUs, and usually FMRs nagtatraversa ng multiple na ano, di ba? Pwedeng tumawid mm -hmm. ng political boundary. Kaya mahalaga na uh, may central pa rin na na mag implement dun sa mga ganitong projects. And mahalaga na we really have strategic area saan natin ilalagay itong mga uh, FMRs. Hindi pwede na basta nakapagtayo lang tayo ng FMR. Kailangan talagang makita natin na merong um, need na ma 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 tutugunan yung FMR na yun. Kasi sadly may mga FMRs na alimbawa, ganito kahaba yung kailangan pero hindi naman na nagawa yung buo na pangangailangan. So, sayang din. Hindi din nagagamit ng tuloy, ng maayos ng um, mga nangangailangan dun sa area. And even yung quality, kailangan din nating bantayan. Ano ba talaga yung quality ng type of road or infrastructure na kailangan dun sa area? Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to other questions we have here from... Uh, okay. Okay, um, Ma'am Abelia, yeah, perhaps you can answer this, no? I think, um, meron na kayong response dito sa ating chat box, but, pero baka uh, gusto nyong, uh, you may want um, to answer this live for the benefit of our, um, for our participants who are watching on uh, Facebook, no? So from Eva Goyena, aside from the identified nutrition-specific and sensitive interventions, what do you think are the main pathways to ensure food security, especially among poorest households? Um, sige po. Maraming salamat, uh, Doc Eva, sa iyong question um, from FNRI. Um, isa siguro rin magand isang pathway to ensure food security through the poorest, sa ating poorest household would be to protect their, through their purchasing power. So, nutrition sensitive pa rin siya, kung tutuusin. Um, dahil pwede siyang, um, meron tayong mga programa na provides livelihood for our uh, poorest household. One, through livelihood, pwede yun. Uh, ano yung mga kakayahan na meron sila? Yun nabanggit kanina sa ating AVP um, sa opening video natin na kailangan alamin ano ba yung problema. So kung ang problema ay poor household ka, ano yung meron kang kakayahan? Um, I-assess natin sila. Kung ano yung kakayahan nila, maar, meron ba sila, pwede ba silang maturuan pagdating sa financial management? Yung simpleng financial management, um, pwedeng doon natin sila dalhin um, bigyan sila ng naayon na trabaho para matulungan sila. Pangalawa ay pwedeng so livelihood. Pangalawa ay uh, dun sa mga direct na mga programa. Uh, pwedeng food subsidy, pwedeng mga uh, coupons. Kung ngayon po ay meron muling pinag-aaralan ang isa sa ating mga partners on use of food coupons. Uh, pwede rin sa um, kung hindi naman uh, through food subsidies, pwede rin naman pong uh, mga cash for work, food for work. Ito po ay ginagawa rin po ng ating partners sa DSWD. Especially po ito ay nangyari noong biglang tumaas, nag-spike po ang ating hunger incidents, mga early 2000 po ito. So nagkaroon po ng mga programa ang ating um, dole uh, na nagbibigay sila ng temporary employment sa mga taong naapektuhan. Um, kung tutuusin po, kung titignan po natin, mapapansin po natin sa ating mga roadways, meron pang nakalagay sa likod yung tupad. That is a program na noong uh, early 2000 siya na, na pinanganak or na-create. Um, that, that is to help our uh, mga uh, poorest poor households na nangangailangan ng livelihood na meron pa rin namang capacity to work. So I think that's another way uh, na para ma-insure natin ang food security ng ating mga uh, 
mga poor or yung nag, mga nangangailangan nating mga household through ensuring na meron silang capacity to to buy uh, nutritious food. So lagi nating i-impress na hindi lang basta makabili ng pagkain. Dapat nutritious, Dapat nutritious. siya. Yes. And then nutritious food does not need to be uh, expensive. expensive. Ma- mura siya basta alam lang natin kung ano itong mga bagay na ito. Thank you, Ma'am Ellen. No? So, meron pa tayong mga ilang katanungan. We have one from Mr. Daniel Agustin. And this one is again for the Department of Agriculture. He asks, what is the DA doing to improve the value chain as recommended by ADB and the World Bank for all crops from farm to table and up to export to help the farmers prevent losses? Jo Marie? Um, concerning the question, ma'am, uh, the DA has crafted uh, multiple multiple commodity roadmaps that inco- uh, incorporating the value chain uh, approach, wherein uh, specific uh, programs or projects are targeted to those uh, to that specific section in the value chain, so we can um, achieve a certain goal. Na, uh, to ensure food security and also prosperous farmer and fisher folk. So that, that's uh, that's one of the major initiatives. So more on your roadmaps and your plans to incorporate uh, the value chain approach. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Marie. Okay. Um, just use the raise hand feature. Uh, I, for our uh, other speakers, just use the right um, raise hand feature in case you would like to uh, provide your inputs no but uh, let's move to another question from uh, Nathalie uh, Sueco this is very uh, important because uh, you, well given our growing population you know, and the uh, and our limited land no he um uh, the question is how do we ensure stability in food production and food availability for a growing population when agricultural lands are being converted for industrial and residential development. Okay. Um, I really would you like to um answer this question? Yes, ma'am. Um, so regarding land, tama po si ma'am Natalie, no? Talagang yung threat na um, lumiit pa yung productive areas natin dahil nga mabilis, mas mabilis yung paglago ng mga residential commercial areas. And kaya mahalaga nga na planuhin natin kung gusto natin ma-achieve ang food security by a certain year, what should we do by now? So kung kung kailangan natin ng ganito karami na uh, hectares ng lupa at asan ba yung mga productive areas na to? Um, ano yung mga kailangan to, to further um, um, develop these lands para mas maging productive pa sila. And, syempre, kung na-identify na natin yung mga strategic locations na to, um, we should also uh, make some um, ways to protect. <laughs> wag, wag nang um, uh, isama sa mga conversion. Kasi nga, identified na natin that these are productive areas. So as much as possible, it encourage natin yung farmers to continue farming in those areas. Okay. Thank you, Ivory. Um meron bang gustong um impo- um is i-share yung iba nating um speakers? Okay. So let's go to another question. Um meron dito from Okay, um uh... From Ed Kibal- Keblati, uh, he sent us via Facebook. Are there research initiatives to develop prepackaged nutritious food or food products and make them available to households? This could be an alternative to ensure access to nutritious food for households that cannot engage in home or urban gardening. Okay, um, Mam Ruth and Jason, uh, would you like to? Uh, provide your response to this question. Ma'am Ellen, first, Ma'am Ruth, first. 
Sige, thank you, Ms. Sheila. Um, unang, siguro, i, ano ko rin, i-mention ko na rin ang FNRI because they have technologies na um, nagpo-produce na sila ng pagkain na nakapak, uh, na pwedeng initin na lamang. Na it, makatulong din to. These are nutritious food. Hindi ito yung usual nating mga mataas ang preservative. So, ito yung mga lutong dos nila and they put it in uh, mga uh, sealed pack na uh, safe po, uh, hygienic. So, ang ginagawa, ang pwedeng gawin is um, ng household is um, iinitin lamang ito to, so available na ito. In fact, FNRI, uh, FNRI was also asked to develop uh, food products that can be included in relief food pack that are, okay. uh, yes, that can be uh, included in the mga uh, mga boxes na, na, or preposition packs na dinidistribute ng DSWD during um, emergencies and disasters. So, meron na tayong mga ano, uh, available. So, siguro for FNRI is kung paano siya mapapalawak yung, Lawak, yung oh. net, network ng distribution. Uh, so, para kasi lumalabas is baka dito lang sa mga yes. parang centric uh, city centric lang or kung nasaan nandoon yung kanilang mga technology adapters so so yon Jason yes <laughs> napakagandang point yun na no paano pa natin uh, yun nga lumawak yung distribution and siguro yung commercialization na rin kasi na mention niyo yung mga food packs no and i recall and i remember marami tayong mga convenience stores no uh, usong uso yung mga pack food na iiniti na lang so paano din kaya natin ma ma, ma engage or be encourage yung yung ating mga <laughs> ganoon uh, para mas mas ma-adapt pa itong mga ma, ma nutritious na mga food preparations na ito Mm -hmm. Um Ellen thank you very much for uh, mentioning actually that's the RTE the ready to eat meal packs of FNRI and uh, the RTE is usually kaka, kaka develop lang din ha? um it is um, healthy and nutritious because it follows the Pinggang Pinoy and PDRI recommendations for adults. Although what I know po, uh, nagkakaroon pa ng mga further uh, products kasi initially tatlong meals lang po ito. So, ibig sabihin, um, yung mga RTE po natin, since it follows Pinggang Pinoy, meron talaga siyang, um, and dun yung rice, and dun yung fruits, and dun yung vegetables, and dun din yung protein source. So, um, hopefully, after um, several uh uh, rerun again, no? at madadagdagan yung three main uh, parang dish or yung three main pinggang pinoy yun muna na offered ng, ng RTE. And uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Ellen, for the uh, for the suggestion po. No? Tama po kayo, no? isa yun sa mga uh, after ma-develop. That's again another challenge. How are we going to uh, uh, commercialize no? this, um, this food technologies? And um, I think yung continuous collaborations natin no FNRI and NC and uh, um, other um, LGUs and uh, this is actually kasi a support to our MSMEs then mm -hmm. no na um, right. bigyan diba, as as an option no uh, para improve yung kanilang uh, yung kanilang profit po. okay thank you thank you Jason um may mga questions pa tayo dito okay um this one is from Okay, medyo, medyo ano itong usapin na ito, ano, yung sa rice uh, importation. May question ulit tayo from Natalie Suwiko. What can be done to ensure stable local rice production so that we can limit rice imports? Is the Philippines ready to be rice self-sufficient in today's economy? Uh, um, may we hear from, from uh, our representative from the DA, Jo Marie? Um, yes, ma'am. So, you, um, our, what our government can do at this moment is to uh, increase the competitiveness of our rice farmers. So, we, we we can increase their competitiveness by also relying on imports because uh, imports uh, provides the tariffs which were in the tariffs collected, uh, the government uses to uh, provide subsidies or um, other technical supports to our local farmers. So, um, uh, what we can, what also we can do is to um, increase uh, um, 
um, government support to crops where where we have uh, comparative advantage. So these are our export crops such as coconuts, pineapple, or banana. Uh, so so our rice farmers could diversify and also um, at their at the family level they can also um, increase their uh, income. So aside from um, planting rice, they can also diversify um, planting uh, crops which are nutritious and high value. So uh, that's one of the strategies that we can implement at this uh, at this point in our economy. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Jo Marie. Okay, so let's um, before we continue, let us uh, see if we have already. Okay, okay. Uh, there's another question here. This time, still on uh, on ex well on rice, no? Uh, from Edgar Paasa. Do we have plans if in the case other agriculture producing countries do not export any more plans that we can become food self-sufficient or food sufficient? Uh, please, uh, John Marie. Uh, yes, uh, we, we still uh, provide priority to our local farmers, specifically rice farmers. Uh, bulk of the DA's budget uh, is allocated to that commodity so uh, we are not 100% dependent on imports we also have to um, uh, so provide su support so that in cases we're in uh, at exporting countries uh, decided to not export uh, due to some circumstances that is uh, valid that is not in violation with the their obligations to, to the world trade organization uh, we still we will still have um, um rice supply that can uh, feed our population okay thank you for that and um this will be our um, last question for the open forum. We have another. Oh, we have another question from our from Facebook from John uh, Patrick Salvador. How does the DA deal with climate change and other extreme weather events that bring extensive damage to agricultural products, to agricultural production, and affect our supply? Okay. Um. Please, John Marie. Um, we have a specific office, uh, the Climate uh, Change um, and Resiliency Office uh, in the department, which uh, specifically deals with this one. So they have uh, research programs that uh, related to forecasting, mm -hmm. um, uh, research programs on breeding uh, crop varieties, which are, uh, for example, flood, to flood to tolerant or heat. Uh, tolerant or disease uh, uh, this is uh, um, that can withstand diseases uh, brought about by climate change um, so so that's uh, I think I um, I can share with you um, all their programs I'm not really adept on what they're implementing but um, I can share with you uh, on the uh, later time okay Jo Marie Okay, uh, well, we just had a very interesting, very engaging discussion. So uh, just to cap our open forum, no, may I ask our presenters for some brief parting words if they have any. So may we hear first from our uh, speaker, Ms. Ivory Mika Galang of the IDS. Yes, po. so uh, for my final words, um, let me just um, say na Itong um, paper natin, we, we do not really advocate lang yung itaas natin imports or itaas lang natin local production. We want um, a flexible um, um, stance. We, we need to be ready kasi maraming risk um, locally or domestically. Meron ding risk outside our country internationally. So dapat ready tayo. We, we we know when to shift to another um, type of product. We, we know when to shift to another source. So yun yung, yung gusto natin na, na um, uh, iparating na 
dapat um, handa tayo sa mga banta. Inisa-isa natin yung threats to food supply. Um, at dapat talaga uh, matugunan natin ang lahat ng ito dahil hindi lamang yung kasalukuyang henerasyon yung makakaranas ng um, negative effects sa health nila, kundi yung mga susunod na henerasyon. So, kaya napakahalaga po talaga na matugunan natin um, agad-agad itong food and nutrition security. I think everyone... Uh... Nag-agree naman tayo na talagang pressing, very serious problem natin itong food, is, food um, insecurity. No? And it's being experienced not just here in the Philippines, but this is a global problem. No? So at this point, let's have Mr. Uh, Chomari Panaga of the Department of Agriculture. Chomari, your party works if you have any. Um, uh, thank you, ma'am. So very important talaga yung uh, research researches that are being conducted by PIDS because this, uh, those researches will serve as an input for our policy. So uh, we have discussed the concept of food security and uh, today we uh, uh, natin the importance also of uh, stability and utilization as part of the food security, not only availability and accessibility. And um, also, uh, we shall continue yung uh, multi-sectoral approach in dealing with uh, these issues and also yung multi-governmental approach, uh, for example, with the OST, yes. with the IDS, DOH, and NC to uh, craft, craft uh, programs uh, na towards achievement ng single goal na uh, mas magiging efficient yung utilization ng government resources. So thank you, ma'am, for conducting this webinar. And also thank you to other discussants and participants for sharing um, your valuable knowledge on this topic. And thank you to Mr. Panaga. Okay, now let's listen to Mr. Jason Labrador of uh, the OSTF and RI. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sheila. It's actually it's very nice to see the conjunction of, of several groups here not only in the individual, uh, individual uh, in the virtual room, no? uh, um, tackling this very uh, critical issue on food uh, security. In, uh, in FNRI, we really pursue to provide um, science-based evidence by, of course, conducting research, which um, yung outputs po nito or yung mga findings po nito ay magagawang inputs to develop new health uh, and nutrition policies and programs and maybe can reinforce existing ones. So yung commitment naman po ng uh, DOST FNRI to provide, to provide correct information, accurate data, and innovative technologies will continue. And um, yung ano po eh, yung commitment po namin mm -hmm. na hindi namin din to kayang gawin mag-isa. We recognize the importance of local and international collaborations and, and uh, that would enable um, resulting ties and partnerships to transform yung knowledge, yung generate nating knowledge to innovative products and technologies as we move forward to a food secured um, Philippines. So again, thank you very much for PIDS for having DOS FNRI and thank you for my uh, whole uh, discussions and to Ma'am Ivory Kalang. Thank you very much and congratulations po. Thank you to uh, Mr. Labrador. It was our pleasure to uh have you at this webinar. And of course, last but definitely not the least, may we hear from Ms. Ellen Abelia of the National Nutrition Council. Ma'am? Okay, uh, maraming salamat, Ms. Sheila, and also PIDS. Sabi ko nga po kanina, itong uh, inyong public webinar is a very good venue for everyone concerned um, to discuss or to raise issues na that will affect every one of us. As kami po sa NNC ay malaki po ang aming pagkilala sa kakayahan or contribution ng bawat isang sektor ng government ng mula sa, pri sa private sa, sa ating lokal na, na pamahalaan, yung ating mga partners internationally, lahat po ito ay may, uh, sila ay may contribution para ma-attain natin ng food and nutrition secure na Philippines and also uh, globally rin po. Um, ang iiwanan ko lang po siguro na, na thought 
sa ating lahat ay ano ako bilang isang individual tayo, bilang isang individual, ano ang ating role para tayo ay makapag-contribute sa food and nutrition security ng ating sa ating pamamahay, sa ating komunidad, sa ating bansa. Um, lahat po ay dapat mag, maging reflect mag-reflect tayo. Uh, we look inward ano yung ating role. And then pag nakilala na natin kung uh, ano yung role natin sa food and nutrition security, that's when we can take part sa movement or take part sa ating community para naman mas marami ang kikilos tungo sa isang secure na bansa na maging productive at nutritious ang mga uh, nutritious and healthy ang mga Filipinos. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Ms. Uh, Ellen uh, Ruth Abelia of the National Nutrition, Nutrition Council for leaving those very important questions to reflect on. Um, indeed, ano, uh, lahat tayo ay may uh, contribution, meron tayong role na ginagampanan para ma-achieve natin ang isang food and food and nutrition secure um uh, na bansa, no? So, sabi nga natin, hindi lang ito problema dito sa ating bansa, kundi this is a global problem. At lahat tayo, pwede tayong, uh, pwede tayong may, may maiambag para um, masolusyonan ang suliranin na ito. So, at this point, please join me in thanking all our speakers for the nuggets of wisdom that they have shared with us this afternoon. And maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng um, the join sa ating discussion by sending their comments and questions that show our appreciation to our speakers and to everyone through a big virtual clap. Okay, so as before, we had uh, a webinar raffle. So we picked uh, uh, several names from among our Zoom and our Facebook participants. So here are our raffle winners for this week. From Zoom, Ms. Ms. Jesusa Beltran and Mr. Ian Bernard Ines and from Facebook, Mr. Rainier Ramos. So maraming uh, congratulations sa inyo and our webinar team will get in touch with you for the delivery of your prize. And finally, we have some reminders. So you can access um, all the presentations from today's webinar on the PIDS website and flash on the screen is also the link to the full uh, paper written by uh, Ms. Ivory Gala. Please answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. Your comments are important to us to improve our virtual events. And also, please regularly visit our website and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We also have a YouTube channel where you can access the recordings of our events. Okay, so flash on the screen are our webinars in November. Okay, so on November 10, we'll discuss housing affordability in the Philippines through a study conducted by PIDS Vice President Marite Ballesteros and her co-authors Titum Ramos and Sherika Ancheta. Then on November 16, Former Research Fellow Justin Diokno Sikat will present her assessment of the 2023 National Expenditure Program, which is more commonly known as the President's Budget. So we hope to see you in those events. Okay, And finally, we would like to acknowledge the various organizations from the government, academe, civil uh, society, business, and international development community that who join us today. Maraming salamat po sa inyong patuloy na pagtangkilik sa aming webinar series. So this concludes our virtual policy forum for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed, uh, stay informed too. Thank you and see you on November 10. Maraming salamat po and stay safe.